This conference will now be recorded. All right, so everyone knows today's uh, class is a National Registry EMT, if you didn't already, put on by Fire Tech Training uh, out of Tamworth, New Hampshire. And this is the student orientation. There's a couple of people by name you should know. Myself, Tyler, JT, he's another instructor with me, and Kevin, who is the owner of the company. All of our emails are here, and you'll receive a correspondence from us about weekly. I'm going to go around the room. We're going to do your name, if you're with a department, your department, and how many years of uh, public safety experience you've had. I'll start with you, Rich. Okay. Uh, my name is Richard Ulrich. I'm with the Freedom Fire Department. Just recently, I just recently moved to uh, New Hampshire from New York State. <clears throat> I was a police officer for 33 years, um, an EMT for probably about six of those years. And then my certification lapsed, and I'm here to get recertified. Awesome, thanks. Shane? Hi, my name is Shane Sloat, and I'm part of Lebanon uh, Main Fire Department, and I have about a year and a half experience uh, with Lebanon Fire Department. Matt? All right, Matt, we can't hear you. You are unmuted, I just can't hear you right now. Sure. Alex? Uh, hi, I'm Alex. I'm with the Lebanon Fire Department in Maine, and I've been with in public safety for about six, seven months now, around there. Awesome. Kyle? I'm Kyle. Um, work over in Lebanon, Maine, and uh, Effingham. Going on three years now. Tyler? Leach? Tyler, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, my name is Tyler Leach. I'm with the Lebanon Fire Department. I've been in public safety for five years. Charlie? Hey, my name is Carly, um, and I'm new to public safety this year. Awesome. Cyrus? Hey, I'm Cyrus. Um, I'm also new. Awesome. Uh, let's go try go back to you, Matt. Sorry, Matt, still can't hear you. That's all right. So, my name is Tyler. I'm currently with Tamworth Fire, Effingham Fire, and Action Ambulance. Um, I've been in EMS for four years now, public safety for six. Um, JT? 
Good evening, everyone. My name is JT Harmon. I'm currently the fire chief in Effingham. I'm also a supervisor for Action Ambulance. I've got about 13 years in the fire service, and I've been an instructor for about five years. Last but not least, Kevin, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, you got me. Yep. Perfect. Hey guys, so my name is Kevin. Um, I'm the owner of the business for the EMT class you guys are taking. So I am at work right now, so I really can't partake on our Thursday nights, but I will be there for all your Sundays. So I have 24 years in paramedic, firefighter, uh, teach just about anything. <laughs> so <clears throat> you have two good instructors here for you guys tonight. Um, they'll be pretty much leading all the lectures as we go through. I will be jumping in on my Thursday nights as long as I'm not on a call or trying to take care of other business down here in Wilmington, Mass. But I also work for um, Action Ambulance up in New Hampshire as well as Massachusetts Division. Um, so we should have a lot of fun uh, for this class. A lot of new things we're trying out uh, and a lot of decent clinical sites that we've picked up over the last year. So you should be able to get enough educational time in. And we're also going to be utilizing our new training center as well. So welcome aboard, everybody. Good luck. Thanks, Kevin. Um, I did want to just mention one thing uh, to everyone before we start here. Um, if you ever have any problems with any of the, uh, with the, with our website, getting on to go to meeting uh, for class, um, you don't know where you're going for Sundays, uh, Saturdays or Sundays classes, um, or if you're having a problem with the JB Learning site, do not hesitate to contact myself via email, text, call me, um, email or text JT or Kevin. Um, we're here to help you guys out. Uh, we really don't want you guys struggling through this. If there is an issue, get a hold of us somehow. Uh, we'll do everything we can to make sure that it's easy enough for you guys to get your stuff done. All right. We'll probably go over this better when we get back to the facilities in uh, Tamworth, the training center that Kevin mentioned. Um, we'll go over that when we have your first uh, first in-person day. The company website. The company website is firetechtraining.com. All one word. Um, we're going to take a look at that in just a few minutes. Everything you need, with the exception of the JB Learning site, which I'm also going to link on that on our website, is going to be found on FireTech Training's website. Your course paperwork, your clinical paperwork, all of the lectures are all recorded, and you can find them up there. It's all going to be under a uh, in a portal. Sometime either later tonight, tomorrow, or in a couple of days. Go on to the website and register for an account. Um, I do have to approve each and every one of you for an account, so if it's not going to be immediate. Um, I texted every single one of you. Uh, that is my personal cell phone. So if you guys go through and you guys add an account and you guys don't hear from, uh, hear from me or anything like that, shoot me a text message. Say, hey, registered, and I'll take care of it. So we're going to go look at the – look right now here. So this is our website. I'm sure most of you have seen this website, at least some of it. So up at the top here. Is register and login and portals. Those are the most important ones you're going to need to know. So if you go to your portals and you click on the Tamworth EMT portal, if you're not logged in, you have to log in before you can add or you can go into it. So I'm going to quickly log in here.
Hang on one sec, guys. There we go. So this is the EMT portal. This is what you guys will see. All your all your lectures. So these are from the 20, spring 2022. These are going to get removed, and we're going to put up the lectures from this class. All of your forms, so the student manual, the syllabus for the class, your health forms, the current state of New Hampshire EMT um, protocols, and some other clinical paperwork that you're going to need. We're going to go over more of that in depth. I'm also going to add the JB Learning site um, down to right bottom down here. Any questions about the website before we move on? All right, sounds good. So the lead instructor is technically Kevin for this class. Um, both myself and JT are gonna be teaching the uh, lectures. Uh, Kevin is going to be there for the um, weekend portions, and he'll be participating during the weekdays when he can. Um, there aren't really any assistant instructors. You might see one or two people pop in here. Um, and the current medical director is Dr. Scott Orr. Clinical sites uh, for ambulances, we have Action Ambulance in New Hampshire Division, Berlin EMS and Stewart's Ambulance Lake region. We do have a few other um, clinical sites uh, to include Littleton, uh, Fire Rescue, um, and a couple other local hospitals. So your handbook is the AOS uh, Navigate 2 Premier Edition. Um, JT has sent out codes for each of you. Um, those are your codes that includes an ebook. That is where everything comes from. Uh, we're also going to need the American Heart Association's basic life support CPR course student manual for 2020. Prerequisites, a high school diploma, a GED, NIMS, uh, 100, 700, and Hazwa Hazwa Hazmat Ops uh, awareness. Uh, 160. Uh, a clinical background check will have to be done um, for your clinical rotations. Those can be found, you can get those online most likely. Um, otherwise, you can contact your local uh, state police and they can do them there. Uh, I believe it's $25 for New Hampshire. Uh, the course outline, this course meets the National Registry core curriculum for the EMT. And this course is here to give you guys the skills and knowledge necessary to move forward as an entry level provider uh, in New Hampshire for practice. Uh, grading, the grades overall, you must average 80 or higher to maintain uh, in good standing. Failure to maintain the cumulative average of 80% or higher will result in the removal of the course per the NREMT. Students are encouraged to, encouraged to check in with their instructor and discuss their progress. You can do so by making an appointment via email or text. Uh, your quizzes are worth 30%, exams 50, attendance and participation is 10%, and some assignments in Premier Edition are worth 10%. And all of this is outlined in the course syllabus. All health forms must be completed and submitted to the clinical coordinator no less than 30 days after the start of this class. Failure to submit necessary paperwork and information by that day can result in dismissal from the course. Uh, the person you're gonna to wanna to send all that to is gonna be kept, uh, if you have not already. Uh, student evaluations. Students are responsible for all materials covered in the assigned texts, laboratory, and class sessions. Courses, Course evaluations will be based upon the assigned readings and lecture materials, as well as detailed course objectives. 
Uh, quizzes will be given on a regular basis throughout this course. Uh, quiz format will be a combination of both uh, didactic or written and practical skills. Practical exams will be given throughout the course. These exams will be based on the National Registry of EMT standards and may assess individual skills or be comprehensive in nature. All practical exams will be pass-fail. Class participation will be based on the quality of your overall interaction with the instructor and other students during class time. Students are encouraged to participate in class discussions and practical activities. Your overall class participation grade will also be based upon effective attributes that an entry-level BLS provider should pose. Final practical exam. During this exam, the students will be tested for the practical competency in seven areas in, per the National Registry of EMT standards. The class final exam is pass-fail. To pass the exam, the student must successfully complete each station with 100% accuracy. If you fail one station, you may retest again that day. If you fail the same station twice, or if you fail two different stations, you must make arrangements to take that practical exam over again on a different day. You, meet, you may retake the exam once before be considering considered to have failed the course. Clinical requirements. In order to complete this course successfully, a student must complete a minimum of 36 hours of clinical time at an approved clinical site. The student must as well meet a minimum of 10 patient assessments. If the 10 assessments are not met within the 36 hours, then another day of ride time must be scheduled to meet the 10 assessment minimum. Attendance. Attendance will be taken at the beginning and at the end of each class session. Students not present at either will be marked as absent from the day. Students who have missed more than two absences unexcused from the course will be deemed ineligible for state licensure and will be removed from the course. Consistent tardiness becomes a disruption of the class. Walking in late distracts the learning of other students and causes a distraction to the instructor. Students will be penalized one percentage point from their final grade for each time they are more than 15 minutes late. Any student that is tardy more than two times will be required to meet with the program coordinator and be counts and a counseled thing form will be placed in the student's file. Continued tardiness will affect the student's family grade. Does everyone understand the attendance policy? That is very important and it's put on us by the state. We have to make sure that everyone, if you have to miss a class, you have to contact myself, Kevin, or JT. Non-discrimination standards uh, statements. Fire tech training does not discriminate in its employment or educational programs on the basis, basis of age, race, color, gender, sexual orientation, national origin, disability, or religion. Fire tech training complies with the Title V of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Title IX of the Education Amendment, of 1972, Section 504 of the Rehabilit Rehabilitation Act of 1973, and the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA of 1990. Dress code. Approved and discussed by the instructor on the first day of class. Ooh, moving fast. T-shirts, shorts, and jeans, and closed-toed shoes for all practical sessions. And a polo shirt, EMS pants, black closed toed non mesh shoes or boots are required for all clinical sessions. This course is a hybrid with online lectures. Each student is required to have their webcam on so the lead instructor may watch the student. 
the student must respond in the online chat box every 10 minutes with a response that coincides with the lecture topic. Basically, we're going to ask questions throughout the lecture. Um, there's a chat box function of GoToMeeting where you can add your response. The instructor has the right to call on any student in the program and ask questions based on the current lecture. Biotech training will have a secondary instructor to moderate the chat box and make sure every student is responding in accordance with the 10-minute rule. If a student does not respond, the moderator will text the student in a private chat to check on his or her status. The moderator has to check in with that student again. The student will not receive credit for that class day and will result in an absent mark. Course outline. Let's see, I'll look back to there. Hang on one second, guys. So this is the course outline. This will be found on the FireTech Training website portal. It'll go over what days we're going to go over, what, what chapters, as well as what your practical sessions will be. Waivers. You are required to participate in the fire tech training program. Based on the practical component of the training includes intensive physical activity. The completion of the release of liability waiver is required prior to starting of the practical evolution. Kevin, have they been emailed out this document or are you going to do that on a practical day? Go back to that, I guess. <laughs> clinical rotations. Clinical rotations will be assigned to each student by the instructor. All clinical questions will go to Kevin Romano. All clinical hours and contacts must be completed at the end of the program for you to pass the program. Without the hours or contacts, you cannot sit for the class final. Clinical evals must be completed and signed off by an FTO uh, for your hours and contacts to be valid. Clinical tire must be worn on all clinical rotations. If you're unable to attend a clinical shift that you're scheduled for, you must contact the clinical site and Kevin Romano. Uniforms. Firetech EMS program uniforms are required for all clinical rotations. Social media. 
you cannot post anything from your clinical rotations on social media sites. We are bound under HIPAA laws, so we cannot post anything, we cannot post pictures uh, from any of the clinical sites uh, or anything detailing that. Um, during the first few weeks of this program, we're going to go over what HIPAA is um, and what you're required to adhere to. And posting anything, if it's found out, can get you removed from this program. Uh, cell phones and mobile devices. Uh, please try and stay off your cell phone when you're in class or at the clinical sites. It could be a distraction to others. Uh, laptops are allowed in the classroom session for note taking and presentations as well as uh, the hybrid classroom. Does anyone have any questions about the orientation? All right. Why don't we take a uh, five minute break? I'll get the next presentation up and we will we'll, uh, start class. This conference will now be recorded. Has everyone, has anyone not used JB Learning? We'll start there. All right, so we have at least one person. Yeah, I have we're it. Go over, all right, we're going to go over JB Learning. Um, it's a fairly simple site. Um, to use it, you're going to log in and you're going to launch your course. So you guys are going to have... You guys will have one that's going to have right here, unless you have more than one course. Um, this course ID is what you're going to need uh, in order to associate it with this course. So when you go into this course, you're going to click launch, and that's going to bring you into this course. So tonight we're going over chapter one. In chapter one, you'll have a bunch of stuff here. <clears throat> first things first, you have your ebook. Your ebook is is basically what it is. You're gonna have uh, that's where you're gonna do all your readings from. Um, if you're a person you want to listen to it, there is an audio book available for it too. Um, you can use the audio book. Uh, there is flashcards. All the slides that we go over is located in every chapter. Um, there is some other stuff, case studies and um, assessment and actions. We'll go over that a little later. Um, the other thing here, patient contact forms. These are important. So this form here is how you're going to... Um, I have to do it a little bit different than you guys do, but... This form here is how you're going to track your clinical um, contacts once we get to it. Um, so hold off on going into those until you actually get through and we start doing your um, clinical times. We're going to go to the PowerPoint now. Any questions about JB Learning? All right. Okay. So Kevin actually wants me to show you a test prep. So this here, um, this here can help you guys out as well. Um, test prep basically goes over in it. Um, You can create practice tests in here. You can review different ones that you've got wrong. Um, 
this is how this is basically what you're going to use to study for your final as well as um, the book. A lot of the questions that are on the National Registry and on your final will be coming from here. And it might be worded a little different, but it's a very, very good tool in order for you to help you study for your tests. All right. So chapter one is EMS systems. Got some competencies. So this text is primary resource for emergency medical technician course. EMS itself is a system. And in chapter one, we discuss that system's key components. EMS itself is a team of healthcare professionals um, that provide emergency care and transport, um, and it's governed by certain states' laws. So each state can have different laws regarding what you can and can't do as an EMT. When you complete this course, you can either take, and that's what this course is set up to do, is to take your National Registry of EMTs exam. Um, after you pass that, you'll be eligible to apply for state licensure um, in any state that recognizes the National Registry of EMTs uh, certification. The National Register of EMTs is not a license to practice in any state. Most states have the following license levels. It's four of them, EMR, emergency medical responder, EMT, uh, emergency medical technician, AEMT, which is Advanced Emergency Medical Technician, and a paramedic. Some states have others that fall kind of in between them. Hang on, guys. Can you see it now? Perfect. EMR is a very basic training. Um, it's to provide care prior to an ambulance arriving, and they can assist an ambulance. Uh, EMT has training in basic life support, or BLS, which can include um, automated external defibrillation or use of AEDs, um, airway adjuncts, and assisting the patient in, with certain medications. An AEMT has training in specific aspects of advanced life support, ALS, uh, which can include intravenous therapy or IVs, um, and administration of a, num of a limited number of emergency medications A paramedic has extensive ALS training, including endotracheal intubation, emergency pharmacology, uh, cardiac monitoring, and other advanced assessment and treatment skills. This EMT course includes four learning activities, um, reading assignments, lecture presentations, classroom discussion, step-by-step uh, -step demonstrations, summary skill sheets, and case presentations and scenarios. EMTs are the backbone of the EMS system in the United States. They are there to provide care to these sick and injured. Although, state, although requirements differ from state to state, generally an EMT is required to have a high school diploma or the equivalent, proof of immunizations, successful completion of a background check and drug screening, and a valid driver's license.
successful completion of the required courses and certification exams, demonstration of the mental and physical abilities necessary to perform the job, and compliance with local, with, with other state, local, and employer provisions. Uh, ADA prohibits employers from failing to provide full and equal employment, and Title I of the ADA protects the EMTs with disabilities who are seeking employment. This may require modifying the work environment or how the job is performed and background checks. The history of the EMS system. Uh, voluntary ambulances, volunteer ambulances rather, started in World War I. Field care started in World War II and a field medic and a helicopter evacuations started within the Korean conflict. In 1966, the accidental death and disability, the neglect of disease modern, of modern society established EMS. In the 1970s, or the early 1970s, the DOT published the first EMT training curriculum. In 73, the Emergency Medical Services Act was created. And in 71, uh, AAOS published the first EMT textbook. National standardizations efforts. Uh, in the 1970s, the DOT's national standard curriculum was created. In the 80s, advanced levels of EMTs was created. In the 90s, uh, NTSA, NTSA EMS agenda for the future was created. And in 2019, the NTSA, NHTSA EMS agendas for 2050 was created. Uh, levels of training, federal level EMS scope of practice module uh, provides the guidelines. State law level laws regulate EMS operations and local levels, your medical director provides oversight and support. Public BLS and intermediate aid. Millions of lay people are trained with BLS CPR and automatic external defibrillators or AEDs are used by lay people. Emergency medical responders. These can include law enforcement officers and firefighters. They are there to initiate immediate care and assist ENTs upon their arrival. They focus on providing BLS and urgent care with limited equipment. EMTs, the course consists about, about of 150 to 200 hours. EMT has the knowledge and the skills to provide basic emergency care. The EMT assumes responsibility for the assessment, the care, packaging, and transport of the patient. The advanced EMT, this training adds knowledge and skills on specific aspects of ALS, including but not limited to IV therapy, advanced airway adjuncts, and the administration of a limited number of advanced medications. Paramedics have extensive training, or a thousand hours or more, up to 1300 hours in the classroom and in internships. The training covers a wide range of ALS skills. Components of the EMS system, it's comprehensive quality and convenient care. Evidence-based clinical care, efficient, well-rounded care, preventative care, and comprehensive and easy access, easily accessible patient records. Public access, the 911 system, it's how everyone has access to public safety. Um, dispatchers obtain the information and dispatch the necessary resources. Emergency medical dispatch or EMD system provides medical instructions to a layperson uh, from on 911. Mobile apps can assist a layperson with CPR and AED location uh, locations. Um, for those in the fire service, uh, I'm sure most of you have heard and some states even like Maine, 
they do um, emergency fire dispatch. EMD is a system, and it does change throughout the uh, country, that gives a kind of an estimate of the severity of the call. So you could get a call at the alpha level that's just a lift assist. You could also get a call at the echo level when someone's in cardiac arrest. And you in that system assigns a call a determinant. It's either Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, or Echo. There is some other ones that like Omega that's out there, but that's not typically used um, as much in the 911 centers. Um, the closer to Echo it gets, the more serious the call is. Where Omega is the least serious call human resources focuses on people who deliver care ems agenda 2050 encourages an environment where people want to work a physician's medical director authorizes emts to provide medical care in the field a medical director acts as a liaison. Standing orders and protocols. Uh, each state has their own set of protocols and standing orders. Um, and your orders can vary by the location you're at and the service you're with. Uh, your standing orders describe appropriate care and establish medical direction for providers. Medical control can be either online or offline. Offline or indirect for your standing orders, your training, and supervision. Online or direct is a direct instruction given by a physician either over the phone or over the radio. I should go back to medical direction for a second. Um, using medical direction uh, can be one of your most uh, important skills. Um, once you gain uh, some knowledge and some uh, time as an EMT, you'll learn how to use medical control or medical uh, to assist you in your uh, treatment of patients. Um, there will be a time where you get a call and you're in over your head and medical direction is there to assist you. They also take a lot of liability out too, um, especially where you have a patient that doesn't want to go. They can be of use to talk to the patient. Instead of coming from an EMT, it's not coming from a doctor, that they really should go to the hospital. So legislation regu regulation, um, training and protocols, and practices follow state legislation. Senior EMS officials handle all the administrative tasks, scheduling, personnel, budgets, purchasing, and vehicle maintenance. Pre-hospital care is coordinated with hospital care. Pre-hospital care is continued in the emergency department, and integration ensures comprehensive continuity of care for the patient. Mobile uh, methods of delivering healthcare. Uh, mobile integrated healthcare is a method for doing for delivering healthcare that utilizes the pre-hospital spectrum. Mobile integrated healthcare evolves with the goals of facilities to improve healthcare at an affordable price. In mobile integrated healthcare, healthcare is provided within the community rather than in a physician's office or hospital by an integrated team of healthcare professionals. Um, this branch of healthcare is causing the evolution in uh, with additional training of EMS providers. Uh, community paramedicine, in which experienced paramedics receive advanced training to equip them with, sorry, to equip them to provide services within the community. In addition, the patient care services a paramedic would typically provide 
services provided by community paramedicine may include performing health evaluations, uh, monitoring chronic illnesses or conditions, obtaining laboratory samples, and administering immunizations. Um, information systems. Uh, computer systems are used to document patient care. They are electronically stored information that can be used to improve care. The medical director is responsible for maintaining a quality control within the MS system and adopting a just culture promotes a learning culture that holds an employee accountable for behavioral choices and balancing fairness and accountability. Continuous Quality Improvement, or CQI, reviews and performs audits of the EMS system to identify areas of improvement and or assigns remedial training. It minimizes errors. Minimizing errors is the goal. Uses a plan to do study act cycle. Patient safety. Minimizes medical errors that occur as a result of rule-based failure, a knowledge-based knowledge failure, or a skills-based failure, or any combination of these. Requires both the EMS agency and EMS personnel to provide efforts. System finance. Finance systems may depend on which organization is involved. Personnel may be paid, volunteer, or a mix of paid and volunteer. EMTs may be asked to gather insurance information from patients, secure signature sheets on certain documents, such as a HIPAA notification, and obtain written permission from the patient to bill the health insurance company. In, 2000, in 2020, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, implemented a program pilot program called Emergency Triage, Treat, and Transport, ET3. ET3 strives to reimburse EMS systems for providing the right patient care at the right time. Set up a, pay, set up a payment method, payment model for a patient transport to alternative destinations such as an urgent care or doctor's office or on-scene treatment with no transport. Educational systems. EMS instructors are licensed in most states. Most EMS training programs must adhere to the national standards established by two accrediting aid organizations. The Committee on Accreditation of Educational Programs for the Emergency Medical Services Professionals, profession rather, and the Commission on Accreditation of Allied Health Education Programs. Frequent continuing education, refresher courses, and computer-based or mannequin-based self-education exercises are measures intended to maintain and update an EMT skills and knowledge. Prevention and public education. Aspects of EMS where the focus is on public health. Public health examines the health needs of an entire population with the goal of preventing health problems. EMS works with public health agencies in two ways. A primary prevention focus is on the strategies that will prevent the event from happening. For example, in, for example educating the community on pool safety and car seat installation. Secondary prevention occurs after the event has already happened. The question that is, how can we decrease the effects of the event? Helmet and seatbelts are examples of secondary prevention. The table on this slide is examples of public health accomplishments.
EMS research. It helps determine the shape and the impact of EMS on the community. Evidence-based medicine or EBM focuses on the pro uh, procedures that have proven useful in improving patient outcome. Many EMS services and state consult with the national model EMS clinical guidelines from the National Association of State EMS Officials. These guidelines are based on the review of current research and expert consensus. Roles and responsibilities of the EMT. EMTs are healthcare professionals, whether paid or volunteer. The roles and responsibilities of an EMT, number one, keep vehicles and equipment ready for an emergency. Number two, ensure the safety of yourself, your partner, the patient, and any bystanders. Number three, be familiar with the emergency vehicle operation. Number four, be an on-scene leader. Number five, provide evaluation of the scene. Number six, call for additional resources as needed. Seven, gain access, or gain patient access. Eight, perform a patient assessment. And nine, give emergency medical care to the patient while awaiting the arrival of additional medical resources. Number 10, you can give emotional support to the patient, the patient's family, and other responders. 11, maintain the con con continuity, uh, continue it, continuity of care by working with other medical professionals. Resolve emergency incidents, uphold medical and legal standards, and ensure and protect the patient's privacy. You can give an administrative, you can give administrative support. Consistently continue your professional development. You can cultivate and sustain community relations. And you can give back to the profession. Professional attributes. Number one, integrity. Acting consistently. Maintaining a firm adherence to a code of honest behavior. Empathy, being aware and thoughtful towards the needs of others. Self-motivation, discovering problems and solving them without someone directing you to. Appearance and hygiene, using your persona to project a sense of trust, professionalism, knowledge, and compassion. Self-confidence, knowing, knowing what you know and knowing what you do not know and being able to ask for help. Time management, performing or delegating multiple tasks while ensuring efficiency and safety. Communication, understanding others and making yourself understood to others. Teamwork and diplomacy, being able to work with others and knowing your place within a team. Communicating while giving respect to the listeners. Respect, holding others in a high regard or importance and understanding that others are more important than you. Patient advocacy, consistently keeping the needs of the patient at the center of care. And careful delivery of care, paying attention to the details, making sure that what is being done for the patient is being done as safely as possible. Most patients will treat you with respect but some will not. Yet every patient is entitled to compassion, respect, and the best care you can provide. As a healthcare professional, EMTs are bound by patient confidentiality. Patient privacy must be protected and findings or disclosures made by the patient should be discussed only those with those treating the patient and in limited, limited situations as required by law with the police or other social agencies. Does anyone know what those limited situations could be?
What about with uh, child abuse? Or on the other end of the age spectrum, elder abuse? When you become a EMT, you will become a mandated reporter. If you see anything that looks like child abuse or looks like elder abuse, uh, you are required by law to report it in most states. You're also required to protect uh, the protection of patients' privacy um, has been drawn to national attention by the passage of the HIPAA Act, or Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. You're going to want to write that one down. What HIPAA itself uh, means, because everyone sits there and says, oh, HIPAA. That's a very good question to see on the NREMT, some of your quizzes, even the final exam. I can tell you right now, most, there's a few people I can tell you right now, do not know what HIPAA stands for, we'll get it wrong. A lot of us do. All right, we're going to pause this here for a sec. We're going to watch a quick video here. So I'm going to pull it up here. All right, this is a video that Kevin wanted me to show you guys. DART is the only helicopter EMS within Vermont, New Hampshire. We provide a service like few others across the United States. Hang on, guys, one sec. 